Um, so, Paul, let's look a little bit more closely at creative projection now. And, um, I mean, we've seen a lot of this going way back to Gail Porter, but, I mean, as recently as John Lennon being projected onto the, onto the Albert Dock. Is projection onto buildings quite popular now? Well, it is, and it's becoming very popular, and I think you're going to see a lot of it. And now, it has been used in mainland Europe, particularly in uh, countries like Paris uh, and some of the German cities, for some time now where the technique has been honed. And it can be very, very impactful, and some of it gets really, really high profile. Now, we've got some great buildings and architecture in the UK. They're just crying out to be used and have some light squared in on them. And I'm sure that many of our clients, many of your clients, are going to ask for more what we call architectural projection, projection on buildings and other things in the future. And I think, particularly coming up to the Olympics, I think we're going to see a lot of this in London, but also in the other cities as well. Now, companies may wish to bring their iconic buildings to life as part of a celebration or part of a, just part of a PR exercise. Bigger, brighter projectors have increased its popularity coupled with HD content. Now, what I'm going to show you now is an example of something that was done in London. Um, what you're seeing here is a building that's been projected on. The effects you see are the projected image. The building isn't moving. It's an optical illusion. It was done for Ralph Lauren in their HQ building in London on Bond Street. And I'm sure, like me, you'll enjoy this clip.
great example of what can be done with uh, architectural projection onto buildings. It's fabulous. I was totally blown away the first time I saw that. Well, and I'm still glued to it every time I watch well, when it. When you see the scale of the building, that's not a small building, that's a large building, and it's very, very clever. Absolutely fascinating. And, and it was just a static building, and that's what I can't quite get over it. It, it can't be, Paul, quite as simple as just squirting light onto a building. Can well, it? no, it's not just a case of squirting light on a building. And, and, and if it was, then, um, then you wouldn't need companies like <laughs> us in order to do it. Um, it is slightly more complicated than that. Now, as you can see from that clip, architectural projection is about bringing a building to life. It's about creating an optical illusion. Now, to achieve this, the overlaid images have to be extremely accurate. Now, what we do is we create a 3D map of the face of the building, which is then used as a projection template. Now, I'll explain this in a bit more detail shortly. You also need to have enough light output to illuminate the building and create the right contrast ratio. On large buildings, this can mean at least 100,000 lumens of light, which equates to about five or six 20K projectors, all overlaid exactly one over the other. And ambient light, particularly in the city, is also an important factor. So the darker the environment, the better the end result. Uh, sorry, I was just swept away there. I was listening to you so carefully. It, I mean, this makes such a statement. It can't be just sort of that simple. What's the process of 3D mapping? Well, 3D mapping is very, very important here. And it's cre what you're doing is we're creating a three-dimensional grid of the building, which includes the exact positions of the windows, the doors, the niches, etc. Now, this is done by projecting a grid, grid pattern, grid pattern onto the structure that fills the width and height of the building exactly. We mark the positions of the windows and the doors until we have a complete plot of the building with all of the features overlaid. Now, this image is then saved as the building template. That building template then gets transferred into the graphics suite. And now we're working within that framework, we're working within that template. Using this, we then create the image of the building, which itself is then projected onto the real building. So what you're seeing isn't the actual building itself. You're seeing a project projected image onto the building of itself, if that makes sense. And if you've done your sums right, it should like, look like the building has just been illuminated by light when, in fact, you're projecting an image onto it. Now, as you warp and change this image, it gives the illusion that the building itself is moving. Now, at this point, the creatives amongst you and the creative agencies, you can really get your creative juices flowing and produce some stunning effects. But I must emphasize that the process has to be extremely accurate in order to get the sort of imagery that we saw there on that clip. I expect we'll see quite a bit of this sort of thing with the Olympics. Uh, you're, going to see a lot the of, you're going to see a lot of this coming up. There's a lot of buildings in London that are going to be illuminated during the Olympics, and we're going to see a lot of this happening. And when, once that starts to get into mainstream... Uh, into the mainstream market, clients are going to be asking, oh, we've got a lovely building, can we do that? We saw it on the telly, and you're going to see a lot more of it. So it's good to know that this is happening, and as a company, we can organise and we can get this done for you. And, Paul, can the clients do this in-house? Well, yes, the storyboarding, you know, our clients have got creative departments in-house, the agencies that we're working with, they can do the design, and the creation can be done by the client. Now, it does require, require certain software packages to create the 3D imagery, but... This, this can be handled by the production agency, if they wish. But Blitz can also provide this if you wish us to do it as a complete turnkey package. The 3D map is created by Blitz using mapping software, and to get the best out of a particular project, you need to be creative and use the building features, the niches and the windows and the, and the shapes of the building, in order to tell a particular story. Now, I've got, a few more, I've got some more examples, a little... Uh, a little mo uh, compilation of, of examples that have been done just to show you what can be achieved.
Wow. It's flamboyant, it's creative, it's beautiful. But there's got to be a catch, there's got to be a price tag attached. I'm playing devil's advocate here. Well, well there, is a, there obviously is a cost. And, it, and if you're on any large buildings, then, um, you know, if people want to light up their building, and they're big buildings, particularly buildings like uh, prestigious buildings, uh, like Ralph Lorenz, then it's not, uh, clients can't expect this sort of thing be, to be done for a few hundred pounds. Um, but the bigger the building, the more light you need to throw at it. And that means more projectors, and that is going to mean more cost. But again, I say it's all relative. Software creation will affect the overall cost depending on how complicated you wish it to be. Environmental factors come into play, such as ambient light, where the projectors need to be positioned, etc. So, you know, if you had a very small building, that may cost £20,000 and you'll be able to get a good result. Very large buildings, particularly the Ralph Lauren one, you're probably up in terms of projection, you're up to about £100,000, £150,000 just on the projection for that sort of building. But it really depends on what the client wants to do. If they want to make a big splash, and this is a big PR stunt, and, and certain companies coming up, certainly coming up to the Olympics, are going to want to do things like that because they're major sponsors. They're going to want to make a big show, and I'm sure that the budgets and funds will be available. And what about pitfalls, Paul? What sort of things do you have to watch out for? Well, there are certain things that you, you need to watch out for. In rural areas, you may be able to quarantine a space and set up without much effect on the surrounding neighbourhood. But in the middle of a city, it starts to get a little bit more complicated, obviously. Permission may need to be granted from the local authority, police and highway agency. Projectors may be positioned in or on surrounding buildings and you need to get permission from those building owners. If the projectors need to be seated on towers, which we've done before, then a full risk assessment will need to be carried out, particularly if they're in public areas. Power they may need to be supplied by a generator, and weatherproofing, certainly for the technical equipment, also needs to be a consideration, particularly in the, in the UK. Now, all of this, all of these things can be addressed by Blitz, and we can facilitate much of this for our clients.